Uh, it is now time for members' statements. Therefore, I will look to the legislature. Recognize the member for Timmins. Well, there's still time on the clock to ask the government if they want to continue the debate, but that's for another day. I, uh, Mr. Speaker, I just uh, want to report to the House uh, the city of Timmins, like municipalities across Ontario and the rest of Canada, are struggling with an opiate crisis. Uh, we have far too many of our citizens, young people and old alike, who are dying as a result of the use of opiates. Uh, one week alone, we had four people in the city of Timmins die. We're only a municipality of 44,000. Imagine what that means in relationship to other cities of larger size. I want you to know that there is hope, though. All of the agencies in the city of Timmins, under the leadership of the city of Timmins, along with the support of myself and our federal member, Charlie Angus, have brought together all of the service providers that are in the addiction fields and the medical field and have started to put together how we can better coordinate services and wrap services around individuals so those individuals who are in crisis, either be it at their home or on the street, are able to be properly dealt with when it comes to providing the support that they need to, first of all, deal with their medical condition, which is their, their, uh, what's going on with the opioids, and then support them towards the path of recovery. And I know that it's a lot of tough work. We've had a number of meetings, but I want this House to know and I want the people of Timmins to know uh, people are working at this. Uh, we have an assurance by the minister uh, that he will allow us to design our own local system so that it is a made in Timmins solution for the people of Timmins, uh, for Timmins. And I think that's a good way to go. Thank you. The next statement, the member for York Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Ontario is home to almost 230,000 people of the Jewish faith. And while we're blessed to live in the most welcoming and racially diverse country in the world, we know that anti-Semitism is on the rise. Fact is, the Jewish community remains the most targeted community for hate crimes by almost any measure. In the last few years, we witnessed an alarming increase in the number and viciousness in the evil that is anti-Semitism. Make no mistake, this is not an academic debate. I often say that anti-Semitism is not limited to Twitter or graffiti. It grows through apathy. It grows through a chill in governments. But friends, not this government. The time for talk is over. The only way to keep this evil in check is to call it out and fight against it. So I'm proud. I'm so very proud that this week our government took decisive action. On Monday, October 26, 2020, our government adopted the working definition of antisemitism as adopted by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, the IHRA Plenary, on May 26, 2016. Our government drew a line in the sand. We took a big step against anti-Semitism by calling it what it is. We defined it. We made it explicit so no one can miss it. And why? Because we refuse to accept it. On behalf of Ontario's Jewish community, I thank you, colleagues, for standing up to me, for standing up to our friends and constituents, for standing up for everyday Canadians, for standing up for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Hamilton West and Today we begin the debate on the Time to Care Act. This is the bill that we put forward to ensure our loved ones receive a legislative minimum of four hours of hands-on care and long-term care. This is an important bill that will ensure that our seniors uh, get the dignity they deserve and it also respects the workers that care for them. I've spoken with hundreds of families across Hamilton, Ancaster and Dundas, and many of you have been beside yourself with worry and with grief. To those of you who lost loved ones, I know that it seems that your grief has no place to go. I know that because of COVID restrictions, you were unable to host proper funerals. And many of you have expressed rage at the being shut out of an inquiry that would have given you a chance to tell the story of your loved ones. So I want to say to you, your pain matters, your loved ones matter. To Laura, who says this about her Aunt Kathy, she was fierce, clever, and practical. She died proud of what her son, Innes Ingram, did to protect her. To Leslie, thank you for our wonderful conversation. Leslie shared that uh, she lost her father recently, and because of COVID restrictions, uh, her mother is alone for the first time in 77 years. To Susan, your fierce advocacy for your brother is remarkable, and to Margaret Wiley, you struggled valiantly to get your husband out of care, only to lose them. I am so sorry. 
I, too, lost my father during this time. I know that our loved ones matter. They did, and they still do. And we will continue to stand up for our seniors because it is way, way past time to act, and it is way, way past time to care. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements. The member for Whitby. Thank you, Speaker. More good news for the region of Durham. The government is providing the region with $3,634,000 as phase two of the Social Services Relief Fund. This funding, Speaker, will help the region of Durham's most vulnerable by helping them isolate and recover from COVID-19. Speaker, the region of Durham, including the town of Whitby, have been facing significant challenges. This extraordinary investment is critically important as will help protect our most vulnerable from COVID-19, including those who are homeless or at risk or becoming homeless. Speaker, the provincial funding is part of the government's $510 million investment to help protect the health and safety of the province's most vulnerable people. Funding, Speaker, will be delivered through the Social Services Relief Fund and go towards protecting and supporting homeless shelter staff and residents, creating or renovating over 1,500 housing units and expanding rent support programs and creating longer-term housing solutions throughout the region of Durham. Again, Speaker, good news for the 700,000 residents in the region of Durham. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Speaker. I would like to share the words, the very powerful words of Arla Lucas and her experience about her mother, who is a long-term care facility in Sault Ste. Marie. She says, the workers are overworked. They cannot give enough one-on-one -on -one time to residents. They are struggling to get everyone dressed, bathed, and fed, let alone any fun time or stimulating, simulating time with residents. I lost my mom during the last six months in her isolation. She no longer recognizes me or recognizes the way I make her feel. Long-term care needs more staff, staff to provide care such as PSWs and staff to provide activities. Until you have experienced a loved one living in a long-term care home, you have no idea how broken the system is. I am not criticizing the existing staff. They are wonderful and they are doing what they can, but there is just not enough of them. We need a standard of care, a quality of home to be set and audits to be done to ensure each and every one of them are meeting these standards. And if they are not, there needs to be repercussions. Make all the homes government run, no outsourcing or leasing from private companies. These should be run as non-for-profit. We need to protect our most vulnerable citizens and give them the dignity and enjoyment for the time they have left. This is her experience of her mom, Judy. Let's show Arla and her mom, Judy, that we in the legislature have the courage and let's pass time to care today. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Oakville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, as always, I'm honoured to rise here today to discuss the contributions of some organizations that have been helping individuals within the, my community of Oakville and the significant milestones that they have achieved. A few weeks ago, I attended the 85th anniversary of Goodwill, the amenity group. For many decades, the Oakville location has provided employment services, skill development, and training for job seekers. Last year alone, they placed 853 people in employment, supported a further 3,000 in their independent job searches, and kept 3.1 million pounds of goods out of landfills through their retail and recycling operations. I would also like to highlight another outstanding organization in my riding, which is Oakville Meals on Wheels. For over 40 years, Oakville's Meals on Wheels has been delivering food to seniors, making around 2,100 meal deliveries per month. Their service has only grown, unfortunately, as a result of the pandemic. On October 13th, through their dedicated work, they've hit an incredible milestone, which was delivering their one millionth meal. I was moved when I discussed this service with Steve Kelly, a local businessman who also sits on the board and makes deliveries to clients. I want to congratulate both of these organizations for their amazing accomplishments. Goodwill and Meals on Wheels have exemplified the Ontario spirit by continuing to support the residents of Oakville. As we endure these unprecedented times, it is vital to come together as a community to support those in need. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.
Member for Spadina, Fort York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm, I'm rising today to ask the government to not only vote for the Time to Care Act, but actually to enact it, to, to make sure that all seniors in Ontario get four hours of hands-on care in long-term care homes. And this, this, the care of seniors in long-term care homes has been a provincial disgrace for decades. In 2003, the, conservative, the former Conservative government eliminated the mandatory 2.25 hours of care, and they used public dollars to build private for-profit long-term care homes. After that, Mike Harris, the former Premier, made himself the chair of, the, of Chartwell, which is one of the largest long-term care home uh, private for-profit corporations. His value is estimated now at $7 million. That's what he has in long-term care. The Liberals did no better. In 2014 and 2016, urged by the, by the Nurses Association, by the Auditor General, by the coroner, they, they su supported, they voted for mandatory four hours of care per day, but they never enacted it. You know, which just shows the way that the Liberals work. They will make these gestures, but they won't actually do what's necessary to take care of our seniors. Today, the Conservative government has an opportunity not just to vote for the, the Time to Care Act, but actually to make sure that every senior in long-term care in Ontario gets four hours of hands-on care per day. The next statement, the member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, we are just a few weeks away from our Remembrance Day commemorations, where we honour the valour, the courage and the sacrifice of those who understood that life without freedom is no life at all. So much so that they travelled from the safety of our country to risk their lives to restore the rights and freedoms of the oppressed overseas. As JFK famously said, what is the point of surviving if our freedoms do not survive with us? Yet this Remembrance Day, we find our freedoms to gather offend the law. Our freedoms to travel are limited. Our freedom to dissent stifled. And our freedom to be with loved ones unlawful. This Remembrance Day, during that moment of silence, or when the last post is being played, we must ask ourselves, what have we become? Accountable, responsible, representative government is what they fought for. Government that trusts the good judgment of its citizens and does the utmost to properly inform them of the risks. We owe those who served, who risked it all and paid the ultimate price much better than this. We must do better to honor them we must be like them. The next statement, the member for Mrs. Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. I rise this morning with a heavy heart to remember and pay tribute to my friend who passed away earlier this month after a courageous fight against a very aggressive form of cancer. Beatrice Moreira Laidlow, our Queen Bee was a dedicated community leader and a true champion for Port Credit. She worked for the Port Credit BIA, most recently as the acting general manager for the past two decades, and she had a major role in almost everything that we hosted, like the Southside Shuffle, the Mississauga Waterfront Festival. A week before she passed, I was honored to join the BIA staff and other local members and business owners for a ribbon cutting ceremony, as we renamed the landing of the Port Credit Lighthouse, the Queen Bee Lookout. This was a fitting tribute for Beatrice, who dedicated so much time and so many volunteer hours to better our community, our province, our country. In this, she was an inspiration to me and to so many in Mississauga Lakeshore, and our lakefront village will never be the same without her voice for our community spirit and the incredible energy that she brought wherever she went. On behalf of all the members, I want to extend my sincere condolences to her family and the Port Credit BIA. Farewell, my friend. Rest in peace. We have the next statement, the member for Thornhill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm very, very excited that Ontario was the first province in Canada to adopt IHRA. IHRA is IHRA, and it's the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism. 
Um, it was passed by order in council and signed by the Lieutenant Governor just this week, and IRA provides a framework that can help guide our government institutions interested in understanding contemporary forms of anti-Semitism, such as Holocaust denial. And today, as we unfortunately today's anti-Semites deny Israel's right to exist. Um, they, of course, subject Jewish people to demonization, double standards, and delegitimization. So, of course, this news is welcomed by so many organizations. I'm going to list a few. CJA, B'nai B'rith Canada, Canadian Friends of Simon Wiesenthal, JSpace Canada, Stand With Us, Hasbara Fellowships, Thornhill Residents, All Communities, All Political Stripes, All Religions. Um, it's the product of decades of research, study, and deliberation by many experts, and it was adopted by consensus by the government of more than 30 countries, including the U.S. and the European Union. And uh, I just want to say that uh, Gloria Gaynor had a song, um, I Will Survive, and uh, the nation of Israel lives is how the Jewish people say it. Am Israel Chai, the colors of the Israeli flag are blue and white. There must be something subconscious about me whenever I talk about Israel and Jewish community and religious holidays, I end up wearing blue and white. So uh, congrats to everybody and thank you for all your support. Thank you very much. That concludes the time we have available this morning for member statements.